Hi everybody, this is Mr. Farmer and welcome to AP Economics. Today we're talking about externalities, which is something that goes to AP Microeconomics and AP Macroeconomics. So we have both positive and negative externalities and towards the end we're going to talk about how can the government intervene and hopefully help out the situation. Here we go. So first things, when we're talking about externalities, a lot of times we're talking about public goods, which again uh, are non-rivalry and non-excludability. Non-rivalry, multiple people can use the same thing at the same time, uh, like a public park. If I go to a park, so can you. That's non-rivalry. Non-excludability, you don't have to pay for admittance. This does cause the free rider problem, um, which is when those who do not contribute to the good or service can still receive the benefit of it. So here's the question. Since this happens, when should the government produce a public good? When should they interfere with a private good? And when should they do nothing? That's kind of the core of the conversation behind externalities, both positive and negative. So first off, public goods. Let's assume that we're talking about some like a public park. It's kind of a good example here. So a question might be, how much does the community think the first unit is worth? Well, again, we have the non-rivalry. And so both person 1, P1, and person 2, P2, they can enjoy this community together, the public park together. So all concerns will consume this good at the same time. So how much do they think this first unit is worth? We're actually going to add up what they think individually. Person 1, I think it's worth $4. I think it's worth five person, $5 said person 2. So combined, they think it's worth $9. So when the government steps in, they're going to consider it to be a value of a $9 value. How about the third unit? What do you think? Well, if you said five, you're on the right track. So yes, they would think, think that the third unit is worth a combination of $5. Now again, the first unit they think is worth $9, and then $7, and then 5 and so forth. So how many units should be made? Well, don't get too crazy. We're still talking about quantity demanded and quantity supplied. So the third unit, the quantity demand, quantity supplied, they're equal to each other. So where they're the same, they're going to buy that. And how much did the government spend on those three public parks? Five dollars. Why? Because that's the benefit the community is going to receive out of it. So each one should be a $5 value. As long as the cost is at or below that, the government should produce that good. Now, moving on to externalities. Externalities occur when the production or consumption of a good or service impact people outside of those directly involved in the market transactions. They are externally impacted. What do we mean? So we got an old comic strip here. So we got, Katie, what's wrong? My class field trip to the zoo has been canceled because of cost-cutting measures. Katie was not part of that board meeting to be a part of the cost-cutting measures. She was in no way part of that conversation, and yet she is externally being impacted. Who knows? That trip might have inspired me to become a zoologist. Instead, this could be the decisive moment that leads me on the path to becoming an economist. And sometimes that's how we feel as economists. But moving on away from the dismal science. Welcome to economics. Here we go. So what we're talking about is marginal benefit and marginal cost. Now, this is technically the marginal private benefit and the marginal private cost. And we have saw this early, early chapters, one of the first things we talked about. This is for people directly involved with the market, the buyers and the sellers. A lot of times you might think of them as supply and demand because there's a lot of crossover here. We're not talking about just the people who directly buy the good. We're talking about everybody. So instead of marginal private benefit, we have the marginal social benefit, or MSB. It gives the total marginal benefit of the good to society as a whole. Everybody impact. Again, there's two groups. Those that are directly involved in the market. I went out and I bought something. That's my marginal private benefit. I bought this thing. I received that much benefit. But there's two groups. The external group, the Katies of the world, that are impacted by the market activity but they did not participate. They're positively impacted or potentially negatively impacted by something that they had no control over. Now, the algebraic restatement, the one that I like to use because I think it's helpful with the graph is this. The MSB, marginal social benefit, is equal to the MB, that'd be the marginal benefit, and it's assumed to be the marginal private benefit. You might say MPB for that reason. 
and then I add on the externality, which we're going to, for our purposes, have a dollar value. We're just going to kind of see how that works out. So let's see. So we have a positive externality education. Because you get educated, you can read signs, you can become more informed for legislature votes, etc., etc., etc. Great. So we have our market equilibrium, the price, the quantities. Those are those who directly purchase the education. They receive that much benefit. And for those who supply the benefit, they receive that much more cost and benefit and everything else. This is the market equilibrium. But then there's those who are externally benefited because you went to school, because you got educated and whatever else it is, you're able to help me in this way. So there's a positive externality to this. So here's our socially optimum because for socially optimum, I want to know where all of society, everybody that's impacted. So I have MSB. And in this case, this doesn't really have an impact on the social cost to this. And so the marginal private cost is going to be equal to the marginal social cost. This is why where that blue arrow is pointing would be our socially optimum output where MSC, marginal social cost, is equal to MSB, marginal social benefit. That is the socially optimum output. So again, at QM, that's the market output that was actually being produced, we have that private benefit. If I add to that the externality, there we go, that's how I come up with the marginal social benefit. I'm adding those two areas together. Those who are directly involved, private benefit. Those who are externally impacted, externality. And for us, yes, this is probably not correct at all. We're going to have a nice parallel lines because, hey, we're in academia and why not? That's probably not a true statement. It, it, it probably has a narrowing effect towards the end, but we're not going to worry about that. On the other side, we have the marginal social cost. The MSC gives a total marginal cost of goods to society as a whole. Once again, there's two groups. Those who are directly involved in the partaking of the market, those who supply the good, essentially, and those who are impacted by the market activity but did not participate. So there's an external cost to them. And again, I like the algebraic restatement because it helps with me graphically. Marginal social cost is equal to the marginal private cost or MPC or just MC plus the externality. So again we have this market equilibrium. We have an externality. We're going to have a negative externality. More about that in just one second. So we have this social cost because now I have my marginal social benefit is equal to my marginal benefit. How do I know that? Because there's been no external benefits either increase or decrease based on whatever this example is. So the MSB, marginal social benefit, is equal to the MSC. Therefore, that blue arrow is pointing towards the socially optimum output. Hence, QSO, the society wants to be at the socially optimum output. And that's going to come up again. And so once again, we have the private cost at QM. And then we have the external cost as well. Because it was added to that, we're going to go ahead and put on the MSC. Then we get a thing called dead weight loss, which we've talked about before. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out where does the market want to be and where is it at. So the market wants to be at the MSC to MSB or Q2. The market is currently at the MPB, marginal private benefit, and the MPC, marginal private cost. So we're currently at Q1. So how much of an inefficiency are we having? That much. This is a positive externality. How do I know that? Easiest way is we want more stuff to be produced. We want Q2 to be produced. And you typically want more of a good thing. So positive externality you want more of. Negative externality you're going to want less of. So we have this dead weight loss, this inefficiency, because we're not at the socially optimum output. Now, besides positive and negative, there's actually two different types of externalities. One is caused by the purchase or consumption of a good or a service. Because a good is consumed, an externality is going to shift the marginal social benefit away from the marginal private benefit. Now, consumption can either be positive or negative. The typical is positive. Okay, the typical is positive. With that said, there can be negative. So for consumption, this is from the uh, visual cheat sheet if you want to look at that. Consumption, I'm just reading here. When the externality is caused by the consumption of a good or service. Because I got educated, this is the example from earlier, there's a positive outcome. Okay. 
on the negative externality side, I purchased a pack of cigarettes. Therefore, I caused secondhand smoking, and so you have a negative impact. Your environment is worse off because of the secondhand smoke. That's a consumption negative externality. You can see we want there to be less of it. That's why the orange deadweight losses point to the left for the smoking example. So if something is purchased, like education, like smoking, that's going to shift the marginal benefit, the marginal social benefit specifically. On the other side, we have the production side. When one is caused by the simple creation of the goods or services, the production of renewable energy is going to lower, for instance, the electrical cost to the grid. So because the renewable energy was produced, like solar panels, therefore, potentially, the cost of electricity is lower. So there's actually a negative cost to this. On the other side, the red side, the negative production consumption, and typically a negative externality is associated with the production of this, would be something like water pollution. Because a company produced something, there's a negative externality, and we see that come on the red side over there. So again, here's the whole image. The most typical, if you want to just remember two of these, is the top left, the consumption positive externality. That one happens much, much more often. On the bottom right, we have the negative production externality. That one happens much more often. So typically, Externalities are again consumption for positive, and so we see this. We have an underproduction or an underallocation. How do I know that? We're currently producing at Q1. We should be producing at Q2. That's going to be the underproduction. The underallocation is we should have more resources going towards the production of this good so we can produce Q2. That's what the underallocation is. For negative externalities, typically it's the production. Okay, so we have these uh, marginals social marginal cost being greater and it's associated with an overproduction we're producing too much we want to be at q2 we're currently producing more q1 and we're over allocating we have too many resources going towards this and we want there to be less so these are the typical ones that's ones i would definitely have you memorize um, if you have some spare time go ahead and do the other ones as well so why native recognize exist Unfortunately, sometimes it's just profit. It's easier for a company if they don't need to worry about things like pollution. It's cheaper. Sometimes it's due to things like tragedy of the commons. Because of the public areas where no private person institution has monetary incentive to keep it clean, the non-rivalry aspect of things, then we have issues. Here we have a river somewhere in the world. I don't actually remember which. And that is all trash. Okay, well, that's not where we live. Okay, well, we'll look at around after lunch. You missed the trash can. Why? Because you're not monetarily incentivized to pick up after your shoes. Pick up after yourselves. But this is the tragedy of the commons. It fell into disrepair, and therefore we have this. You go to a park, you go back to the same park 10 years later, it might be in a little bit worse shape. This is the negative externalities. And this is why sometimes it can get really, really bad, which is why we get to this thing called the Coase Theorem. Should the government intervene? Now, the Coase Theorem is a little bit longer. We're going to talk about kind of these three things. The government should get involved, depending on if property ownership is clearly defined, if the number of people involved is small, and if bargaining costs are negligible. If property ownership is clearly defined, it is definitely yours, not mine. If number of people is really small, it affects three people, not three million people. And bargaining costs, you know what, for 50 bucks we can figure this out. Government, you should stay out. If property ownership is a little undefined, the government might get involved. Maybe it's a small claims court, or maybe it's a larger case. Number of people is really large. Okay, well, then, then again, you can kind of build up. This is a spectrum. Okay, it, it's not a one way or the other. It could be a small thing, or it could be a really large thing. But this is when the government would get involved. So what kind of measures could they do? Well, historically, for negative externalities, they might pass legislation limiting the activity. Okay, in 1990, this is from our textbook, the McConnell Brew textbook, uh, the Clean Air Act of 1990 forced factors and businesses to reduce emissions by 90% within the decade. Okay. They might increase taxes or change specifics related to the goods. They can directly control the, uh, the margin costs by increasing taxes on those goods. 
uh, or putting up more roadblocks, pretty much making it harder to produce and therefore decreasing the supply of the products. For pause functionalities, they could subsidize. They did this for a long time for solar panels. For new mothers, they would give coupons for inoculations because it was that. Subsidized producers produ pay for the uh, from the government to the producers, making it easier to produce this good because, hey, we like this. Hence, things like scholarships to universities. Let's make it easier to an extent to go ahead and get educated. That'd be subsidizers to buyers. And sometimes, in extreme cases, maybe the government just provides the good. Okay, large governments may simply make it a public good in general. Now, what these curves can do is shift. Externalities do not shift curves. Let me get that really straight. Nothing on these two graphs have shifted. We're identifying what the market is at. What the government might do is they might try to internalize these externalities. So they're going to try to, for the one on the left, on the pause externality, maybe they subsidize the consumers. Maybe they subsidize or provide a tax incentive for the producers, and therefore they're going to shift the demand, the private benefit over, or they make it easier to produce and shift the private cost over. Pretty much we want to get closer to the socially optimum output. Or on the other side, we're trying to make it more challenging to produce based on a negative rationality. We're not going to worry too much about the price. The main thing is I want to make it harder to either purchase this or harder to produce this good. So I'm trying to shift that marginal private cost or private benefit to the left, therefore getting it closer to the socially optimum output. Quick little note, this is pure academia. When you shift the private benefit or private cost curves, we're gonna hold our social benefit and social cost curves stable. They don't move, which again is not realistic, but we're going to just kind of leave it there so we can see the end goal of getting closer to the socially optimum output. So today we talked about positive and negative externalities, government intervention, the Coase theorem, shifting the curves of externalities. So hopefully this is making sense. Until next time.